This is a painting of Woodbridge in Suffolk and this is my reference. The first stage is to wet the paper. So I'm just using a big brush and plain water. Then I'll add some yellow, which is a lemon yellow that I've got here, and followed by some rose madder. What I'm trying to create here is sort of a bullseye. So you'll see that as it comes along. And this is going to give atmosphere uh, and a background colour to the painting. The next colour I add is going to be some ultramarine blue. It all looks a little weird. I had previously drawn the painting that I want to do onto the paper so I know where things are going to be. So that's all the colours added in and the next stage is just to spray with water and turn the painting around. So I keep spraying and turning and what I'm trying to do is allow all those colours to merge together and soften. Spray and turn, spray and turn, and just have a little patience. There we go, it's running down, so we're almost there. And when I've done this, I'm going to be drying it with a hairdryer because I'm too impatient to wait for it to dry. But before you continue, you do need to allow this to fully dry. So now it's dried and softened back in colour. You can see that gives a general glow to the painting. It gives my sky and it'll give my reflections into the water in a little while. So I start with the distant trees with a soft blue, blue grey. It's a beautiful spot here. This is uh, Woodbridge in Suffolk and it's a mecca for artists really. It's a lovely place to come and paint. Just putting the shape of the top of some trees into the background here and a little bit of texture. I don't want to build up too much colour here because this is supposed to be giving me a, a sense of perspective and distance but I need it strong enough to, to stand up. Again I'm going to dry this uh, using the hairdryer mainly because I am so impatient. And then we have the next layer of trees coming forward, so it's, it's putting one layer in front of the other. This is a slightly stronger blue-grey. Um, as with all watercolours, they tend to, to dry back a little bit lighter, so I'm, I'm quite confident of putting a decent amount of colour in. Um, and then uh, I know that it's going to soften back. But this extra colour that we've got here will make the trees that are behind it go further away. and shaping the top of the trees. What I did there was this, um, I had a little bit too much water on the brush so I just dabbed it on my cloth to dry it. So again, just building up the layers of texture and colour and strength just to give form to the, to the background. Now here I've got a little piece of bamboo stick and I've just dipped it in some paint and I'm just scratching it on the page. I'm trying to give the impression of the, the trunks of the trees and some branches 
um, but it gives a really nice fine mark. So just putting a few on both sides. So you can see the marks there that I made with the um, bamboo stick and now I'm coming to put some foliage on top of these trees. So little cops of trees on the other side of the river. I'm painting quite a lot of this and I'm going to do some more of this when I get to the water but I'm using the side of the brush, a technique known as dry brushing. And what it does is it just catches the top of the surface of the paper and leaves little gaps so it's not quite a solid mark, it's this broken mark which works really well for these trees. I'm just putting in a few extra trunks with my brush. Now there's the mud flats on the far side of the river. This is a painting at low tide, so you've got mud flats on both sides of the river here. I'm using a mixture of ultramarine and umber, so it's a blue-brown uh, mix. Um, I don't want it to be too bright, I want my stronger colours to be in the foreground. And again, I'm using that dry brushing technique, which allows some of those background colours that we painted with a bullseye to show through. and. I hope that they will look a bit like puddles of water in the mud flats. And just putting in some darker patches, just creating some shadows and some little rough patches uh, just to give it a more natural look. As ever with painting, you start somewhere and you kind of jump backwards and forwards if you feel that you need a little bit more strength of colour somewhere. And coming onto the water itself, so this is more of an ultramarine blue. Um, I've diluted it a little bit. It's actually quite a similar colour to the, the tree colour that I've been using. Very much a dry brushing technique. I want to be able to leave some sparkle on the water. So when you use the tip, you get more of a solid mark. And then when you use the side of the brush, you get more of that broken mark. And that bullseye gives you that general glow in the background, which is lovely. You don't want it too strong, but by the time you've sprayed it and softened it, and then it's dried, you get this lovely gentle background colour. So I'm working my way across the water, but I'm using a variety of different blues. It's mostly ultramarine. Uh, there's a little bit of brown going in there, the um, umber going in there, and there is also a little bit of an intense blue, a sort of fallow blue or Prussian blue, those kind of colours. So I've got the water area all covered now with a first coat, but I need to put a few extra details in behind the boats before I put the boats in, because it will be quite tricky uh, to put the, the details in once the boats are there. So 
So when I do this sort of painting, it's a constant case of jumping around the painting, bringing up a colour, adding a shadow, softening something all the time. Just building up the layers of colour. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now here I'm using the very fine tip of a brush and I'm just putting some ripples into the water. So once I've got those ripples in, it's time to start adding adding the boats. This is quite a scary time because it's quite a bold move to put this dark in. You can just about still see the drawings that I did before I started the painting. It's just worth taking your time, getting the, the shape right that you want. And by leaving the gap you either get a bit of reflected light on a on a window within the boat cabin or if it's a transparent window you can see through it but that's where all of that background colour just comes into its own. This is one of the SAA silver brushes and they have a beautiful point on so you can get these really fine marks. I think this is a number eight that I was using there. I'm now using a flat brush. This is one of my own, own range of brushes. Um, the side of this beautiful flat brush gives me a nice thin line which is quite difficult to get straight off with a, a, a round brush. I'm not steady enough of hand to do it with a rigger. Um, and some of the smaller rigging, if you're not confident, just put it in with a pencil. I'm starting to add a little bit of the reflection of the boat into the water. And this boat is in the main channel, so it's it's sitting in the water. The other boat is on the edge of the mud flat, so it's it's leaning over. Again, just continuously building those layers within the water. Anywhere you add layers of, of ripples, you're creating the impression of uh, the wind travelling across the surface of the water. And this is kind of starting to come into the edge of the mudflats here. I'm 
Oh, this is quite a scary thing to put this big dominant boat in here. But sometimes, if you're confident enough with your drawing, you just have to go for it. At the moment, I'm not putting this in as dark as the other boat, which is very much in silhouette. This boat is a little bit closer, so you can see a bit more detail onto it. So I'm going to add some more dark into it in a minute. Um, and hopefully that will give you a bit of shaping on this boat. Concentrating very hard here, obviously. So I'm starting to add some of the darker colours onto the hull of this boat. And some of the detailing. Again, just coming adding some reflections and back to my nice big flat brush to put in the rigging to come together just add a few more strengths of shadow and again a few more layers in the water in the reflection Now as we come forward the ripples are starting to get darker so I need to add some stronger darks into the water. And I'll carry on bringing that forward over the mud flats. You start to see hollows and dips, which give you these lovely shadows. So I've brought those shadows forward and again I'm just continually building my darks into the mud flats at the front and it's just layering of browns and blues and greys uh, so it's ultramarine, umber, um, I've got some of that intense blue in there as well. It is quite a monochrome, I think I've probably only used three colours other than the lemon rose and ultramarine at the beginning, I think the only colours I've used is ultramarine, uh, raw umber 
and the intense blue. Again, building some more of the browns, which are warmer colours, which will bring this foreground towards you, bringing that brighter brown will add a warmth to it. By leaving some of those patches of that original colour, we've got some big puddles in that mud flat in the foreground as well. So I'm just making sure they're, they're visible with a few darker marks around them. And there we have Woodbridge at low tide. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.